Today I'll be escaping some of Minecraft's most aquatic prisons. This includes any prison related to water, the ocean, the sea, or even any ice prisons. And all of these prisons are being escaped to support Team Seas. If you somehow don't know what Team Seas is, it's a massive YouTuber collaboration started by MrBeast and Mark Rover. The goal is to remove 30 million pounds of trash and plastic from the ocean by the end of the year. So if you haven't already, please donate to TeamSeas.org and give whatever you can. Every single dollar helps. Now without further ado, let's get into the video. The escape for Atlantis Vault will be pretty simple. The cell is one block away from this outside wall, so all I need to do is get past the wall by using pearl glitching, and get up to the prisoner's platform and place a bed and a lit respawn anchor. My goal for this run is to get under 10 seconds. Let's see how I do. Poseidon's Vault. Considered by many to be the prison that started it all, the second attempt at an inescapable prison that kicked off this whole community. But to be honest, the prison is absolute garbage. The bed is right next to the cell and only separated by a block. There's no outside alarms to detect break-ins, no chunk bands, and that's just to name a few. But worst of all, all of the walls aren't even filled in with obsidian or crying obsidian, but with fucking sea lanterns! Which means I can just use respawn anchors to get directly to the cell that's right behind the portal room. This is faster than Kennedy's method that goes to this dispenser. Let's see if I can get under 15 seconds on this one. From one absolute catastrophe to another, let's go on to Guardian's Vault version 3, which might be even worse than Poseidon's. Half of the prison is made of dirt, and these outer chunk bands aren't even protected by anything. There's no roof alarm, and the suicide isn't even a suicide, it's just a chunk kicker. The only reason the speedrun will be slower than the others is because I found a solo escape. You see, this prison uses a squilly bed glitch to get you into the cell, but it kills you while in crawl mode, which means you don't even respawn in the cell but instead of this one block tall space with redstone. From here, all you have to do is dig straight down and then break your own bed. I might be able to get sub 30 on this, but it's gonna be very close. Well, I didn't get sub-30, but a solo escape is a solo escape nonetheless. The next prison is Glacier's Orb, which is a massive upgrade from the prisons I just escaped. However, this won't prevent me from getting the world record. I'm gonna be using the same trick Kennedy did to get past this door, and then break these two blocks to get into this redstone line leading directly into the cell. Again, my goal for this escape is under 30 seconds.
Neptune's Last Wave. The most challenging prison to speedrun yet. Despite having no exploits or even chunk bands, the entire prison seems to be speedrun proof. All of the kill checks are in another, the walls, floor, and roof are protected by an alarm, and the prison is absolutely massive. But me, with the help of Crappy J, found an escape. The first step is portaling in during the visiting process and getting into this room, and waiting for visiting to be over. Once everything has died down, I will sponge up this room, respawn anchor the bed, and break these two blocks to get into the next area. This lava chasm can be easily passed by enderpearling into the water on the other side. Finally, you can mine directly into the cell from there. With this method, I'm hoping to escape in under 50 seconds. So I finished writing the script and I kinda realized I forgot impel down, so I'm just gonna escape that. While you're watching this incredibly exciting escape, you should join my Discord server linked in the description. Especially if you have any questions relating to any of the escapes in this video. I try to read all the comments, but Discord is really the best way to reach me by far. Also another reminder to donate to Team C's uh, if you have the money. One dollar equals one pound of trash removed from the ocean, and uh, it's a very good cause to remove trash from the ocean and not keep it in the ocean, so donate to Team C's. Let's go sub 3 seconds, baby! 